welcome everybody. Uh, today our speaker is uh, C. Lee, and he will be speaking on elliptic car homology and quantum mass equation. Uh, so C, I give you the floor. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, actually, I like the name very much, like global <laughs> Poisson. Yeah, I think this is really a new trend. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'd like I'd love to like share some something that I feel interesting and that I've been working like for for for, for times <clears throat> on this like things related to index theory and uh, quantization. So uh, uh, let me let me start with uh, a some basic motivation and some examples, and starting from this uh, famous story of deformation quantization. And uh, for simplicity, I, I, I'm, I've been talking with about this uh, sympathetic case, like sympathetic manifold. And for deformation quantization, we have this kind of uh, star product <clears throat> uh, as the associative algebra. And in this case, in a sympathetic case, <clears throat> uh, on this quantized algebra, there exists a unique trace map. <clears throat> if you normalize it suitably, and it's a trace because it satisfies the trace property. If you have two operators, <clears throat> the commutator, the trace of the commutator is zero. I can show there's a unique trace. Um, and then if you compute trace one, which is about somehow somehow related to the index, you find the following formula, <clears throat> the roof genus and so on. And there's some other classes related to the deformation, the, uh, the moduli of the deformation quantization. <clears throat> And this is a, this is the algebraic index theorem, which was first formulated by Fadasov and Nesikin, and it's the algebraic analog of Atiyah Singer index theorem. Uh, Actually, later on, see, yes. Sorry, I have uh, maybe two two short questions. So this omega, how is it? it it's not necessarily the original symplectic form, or is it? Oh, it, yes, it could should be omega h bar. It should it can be a lot of uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. questions. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you're, you're right. And then, um, yeah, I, uh, how is it, uh, do, do you know, I, I, I was always referring to, to this theorem as Nest Sigan, but you, you're saying Fedosov already had it in his original construction or how, just, just, just to know how. Oh, yeah, yes, he, he already got this uh, in, he, he, in his uh, construction, but it's uh, in a different way. So yeah, he wrote, a, he explained this one in his book, the big, the, the big book. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thank you. <clears throat> so, um, and uh, yeah, actually, Ness Deacon, they later on uh, uh, showed that this, uh, this algebraic index implies the analytic index theorem, like using this micro local analysis. So, this is, this is a pretty strong statement. Um, actually, the way Faraso proved this is, uh, is somehow using this uh, micro local method. <clears throat> and so, uh, uh, a few years ago, like uh, <clears throat> we actually found an uh, interesting connection about uh, this uh, this algebraic index with the uh, with the quantization of topological quantum mechanics, and um, I, I will say a few words about it later. But somehow it says like if you look at this uh, physical model, like a uh, mapping space from the circle to target, and if you do a rigorous quantization <clears throat> uh, using the BW quantization, I will say a few more more words. Then you get this uh, algebraic index directly. And the trace map is formulated in terms of the correlation functions, and uh, because of the structure of the of the of the of the uh, data, I mean th this uh, this trace map automatically satisfies a virtual so-called quantum mass equation. Uh, I will also explain, and this implies the index theorem directly. So <clears throat> now, uh, in this talk, actually, uh, I'm going to follow Witten to explain uh, to understand the following question, like. Now, in, in, in this uh, thick model, in particular, this quantum field theory, if you replace S1 by a torus, say it be curved, for example, then <clears throat> again, it's like, like in physics, it still makes sense to talk about this uh, quantum field theory. And if you think about this mapping space as like a uh, from torus to some target as uh, something like a S1 to the loop space, then this is going to be related to the index of, of some kind of drug operators on loop space. Still now, like we don't have a like a rigorous analysis on on this drug operator on this interdimensional space. So this is still one of the 
major problem in this uh, in in <coughs> in this field. But actually, we want to understand uh, an an chiral analog of this algebra index. So this is a parallel to the algebra index theorem that I just mentioned, and this is going to be the goal of my, of my talk. Um, so the main tool actually is going to be using uh, the B way quantization. <clears throat> And eventually, what we're going to do is the following: like we are trying to we try to understand this sigma model from a worship to a target. And in this uh, in 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 this quantization, uh, what happens is is that we find a, a precise geometry describing so, uh, the so-called localized effective theory. That's something like the if if if, if you think about something like uh, you, if you throw this surface to some point on the target and do quantum fluctuations. They can glue some data on the target, and they can describe this gluing using galvan castan formal geometry, and this quantization can be leading to some index type theory, and that's that's the that's something that I want to explain today. And <clears throat> but actually, uh, my original motivation for this work is to understand actually uh, some problem in mirror symmetry. So let me say a few words. Uh, uh, I guess most people know the story, like mirror symmetry as a duality between this uh, sympathetic geometry, which, which is called A model, and the complex geometry, which is, which is called B model. And they all actually arise from a two-dimensional topological sigma model. And in the A model, is yeah, it, I, mean, I mean, somehow we study uh, integrations on uh, infinite-dimensional space of a mapping space. From a Riemann surface or target, and in this model, like a, because it's topological theory, like a physics, physics find an argument to localize this uh, infinite-dimensional integration, which is ill defined, to a finite-dimensional integration, like holom of holomorphic maps, and then you get the um, so-called Gromovitian theory. That's the uh, A side. On the other hand, like uh, if you go to the other side. This is going to be this is going to be related to the A side by a Fourier transform, and we know like from calculus that Fourier transform leads to some kind of uh, integrations which which are, which are going to be equivalent. But if you work it out in this infinite dimension model, you find something completely different. But then you still do localizations, you localize to constant maps, and that's going to be something very weird. If you try to study some measure on or around these constant maps, uh, you're going to find some connection to Hodge theory actually. So for example, if you count like uh, constant spheres, you will find variation of Hodge structures on the modular space. But if you, you can study higher genus curve and in principle, what you're gonna find is actually a, a quantization of the variation of Hodge structure, which is quite interesting itself. So this is a, this is a mysterious part of B model and that's the original motivation for this work. <clears throat> Uh, if I have time, I might I might explain a little bit about the uh, connection to this B model at the end. Now, here are two types of model that I'm going to discuss today. The simplest one is like a one-dimensional case, topological quantum mechanics. So the the, the source is one-dimensional. It's basically basically line or curve or circle. But my <coughs> major uh, focus is on two-dimensional case and. It's about the study of a chiral deformation of conformal field theory. And actually there are many uh, models in the literature which are related, like uh, pro probably like a famous one, like a Poisson sigma model and some kind of like chiral drum complex, chiral differential operators and some other stuff. Like I, I, I list a few of them, probably not all, but uh, the many interesting examples that fit into this discussion. So, but before I discuss the, the general theory, I, I, I basically I'm going to use the BV quantization. So just let me say a few words about BV. And <clears throat> this uh, BV, this battalion Wikowski uh, method is, uh, is, a, is a general method to quantize like gauge theory. So it's uh, it, it arise from physics. But for this, the algebraic structure is pretty simple. If you start with like a, a, uh, two data like A and Delta. A is the uh, they graded or sometimes they two graded commutative associative, associative algebra. And Delta actually is a linear operator of degree one square zero, but it's not a der derivation. It's called a second order operator. 
And you can measure the, the failure of this one being a derivation. And this defines the Beery bracket. And it's second order, just like uh, it, somehow it satisfies a version of graded uh, uh, Leibniz rule. So I guess like most people have seen this. Um, that's the that's the BB algebra. Um, what I'm going to explain is the following. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to uh, actually this turns out to be a general structure if you do quantization. So if you start with a chain complex, now uh, I need a parameter which parameterizes the quantization this H bar, and uh, H bar linear map from this chain complex to a BB algebra, uh, also with H bar parameter. And this map, linear map, is set to satisfy quantum mass equation if the following equation is satisfied. So this equation says like this map is, is a basically a, a chain map. So interchange the differential from the left to the differential, which is a BB operator, like H bar delta from the right. So that's what this one says. And it looks a little bit different than the, probably the, the quantum mass equation that you have been seen, have seen like in the literature, but actually it turns out to be, uh, well, equivalent and a little bit general. So this is a very classical example. If you take a trivial, basically a trivial uh, simplest uh, chain complex with a trivial differential. And if you, if, if you can define linear map, like sending an element to uh, multiply by some factor, and this factor can be lying in this uh, in this uh, BV algebra. And you have to understand this map in a suitable way. It's like you have to use some topo like topology or so on, but it can be understood. Then this linear map satisfies a quantum mass equation like interterms differential, if and, only, if and only if this equation is satisfied. So h bar delta i plus one half i bracket i equals zero. And that's the usual quantum mass equation that described in the literature. So. What I describe is a is a generalization for this notion. So I hope this is not too strange. And <clears throat> now let me say a few words uh, to explain what we're gonna find in general if you quantize, like say, a field theory. Uh, you will find the following data in uh, like generally speaking. First, if you quantize the system, you will find an algebra which is called observables. Uh, they form an actually a factorization algebra as like as described systematically uh, by Castello and Gilliam using this BB quantization. <clears throat> That's the one way to understand it. So it represents, for example, these local operators or non-local operators living on your space time. And importantly, like this guy actually gonna be like forming some kind of chain complex. And with uh, and this chain complex described the algebraic structure of this observable. So I, I've, I've say a few words, like by some examples, you will see what it looked like. And then you will find a BB algebra. And this BB algebra arises from the so-called geometry of zero modes. So you're gonna find this, uh, uh, also this BB operator. And uh, a version of so-called BB integration map so this BB integration integration map and now it's like a Happy Wednesday! Happy Wednesday! Starting BB algebra. Um, okay. Um, and then you're gonna find the linear map, uh, which interturns the chain complex chain complex of observables to the BB algebra. And this is this is a this is a trend, trend map into terms of differential, so it satisfies the quantum mass equation. And this map basically organizes all the information about uh, the so-called renormalization. And uh, if you if you have a good model to understand renormalization, you will find this map. <clears throat> and finally, if you try to compute uh, the so-called partition function, and that's the the correlation function for the identity operator. And this is usually usually related to, to the index. So oh, I also try to explain why this index in, in, in the example of topological quantum mechanics. So that's a, actually, this is very general. I mean, if you study quantum field theory and our job is to figure out this data like rigorously and precisely. So this is a very simple example. 
the so-called one-dimensional quantum mechanics. So it's, it's a field theory uh, in one dimension, so living on a circle, and the local observables like li living on the, on the circle uh, form actually a social TV algebra. But in the topological quantum mechanical case, if you start with some kind of a phase space, then you're gonna find the wire algebra. Um, they can collide on the circle and form an associative algebra. And then <clears throat> you can form a, a chain complex from this data. And this turns out to be the Hochschild chain complex associated to this, uh, this wire algebra. And the BB algebra I mentioned is, is a geometry of zero modes. And in this case, it's given by like a, a basically a, a differential forms on the, on the, on the phase space. And the differential, the BB operator is the lead derivative with respect to the Poisson, Poisson kernel. And that's also a very like a standard, very famous BB algebra. And oh, what happened? Uh, hold on. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, okay. I hear you. Okay, great. Yeah, something happened. Okay, great. Uh, and then you can also uh, glue this data on, on a symplectic tar target. I mean, and this turns out to be, uh, <coughs> you get a, a basically a bundle of this data, which is which is a wire bundle, and which carries a flat connection, so-called a Fadasov connection. And you can show this Fadasov connection is precisely the quantum mass equation. <clears throat> uh, that, that's actually a, a very uh, nice uh, uh, link. And now this, this, uh, this trace map, comes from the correlation functions. And actually this is known to Feijan and Feld and Schrocki in their study of the <clears throat> trace. But in this model, concretely, this trace map can be, can be described in the following way. And I want to say a few words about it because it can be generalized uh, naturally to higher dimensional models. So what's happening is the following, like you put a bunch of observables on the circle. I mean, it looked, it's, uh, it, it's so, but they can move around, but they, 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 they don't uh, coincide. So it's about the geometry of the config, configured space of the circle. Then uh, on, at each point, look, observables, I mean, it, uh, you can insert some elements of the wire algebra. Um, then <clears throat> you insert some operators, uh, something related to uh, topological field theory. So here I have a notion like O, o bracket one, that's called a topological descent of some local operators. So it's basically a non-local operator in physical terms, but there's something you can write down rather explicitly. And you can also construct this, this, uh, this, 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 this part, I call free correlator using, um, for example, Feynman diagrams. And you find some functions on the conf configuring space of the circle, you integrate. And this integration is subtle because usually when, when these observables, they, 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 they uh, they collide, they will, they will try to make some singularities. But in this case, you can show this correlation function extends naturally to a compactified space of the config for configuring space. And this turns out to be a very general phenomenon in topological field theory. But it's not true in other models like a Chiral models that uh, I'm going to explain. So, but this in this case, in topological case, it usually simplifies. And you can show this map satisfy the quantum mass equation. And you can use this equation. I mean, if you do a little bit more work, you can use this equation to, to, to prove the algebra index theorem. And um, um, as a, I mean, if, if you are interested in like, you can look at my paper with uh, uh, Shika and uh, my student, Zheng Ping Kui, <clears throat> uh, last year. So that's the, that's the story about uh, topological quantum mechanics. But now I want to basically, uh, uh, as a comparison, like generalize this story to this uh, two dimensional conformal field theory. Uh, so <clears throat> first I need to describe the algebraic data. Uh, the 2D case, like the, the algebra is the vertex operator algebra, like in parallel with like the associative algebra. So <clears throat> usually like the, def the precise definition of the vertex algebra has a lot of data, but uh, the most important ones are the following. Like the first one is about so-called state field correspondence. So you can send an element of the algebra to the endomorphism uh, valued in the parameter Z. So <clears throat> you can think, um, somehow you can think about this the parameter Z as, as some, some the, the holomorphic coordinate or the location of the point. 
um, if there's no z, you know, as an associative algebra, if a map from, from v to n, n, n of v, if there's no z, and that's the multiply by itself. But in this case, you have this additional parameter, which is going to be playing a very important role. Sometimes, like uh, mathematicians write y a z as a convention, and physicists would write, just write a z for simplicity about this guy. <clears throat> and Usually we write in this way, like A and B, when, 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 we, when we collide them, like you have some kind of like a Taylor series, uh, uh, well, series expansion. And this indicate the fact that if you approach uh, like a, an operator from the other point, say in this case, like A goes to B, <clears throat> it depends on the, on the position, like uh, holomorphically. That's why it's called a Cairo model. And in many examples leads to, like, for example, any free theory, CFTs leads to examples of this kind of algebra, for example, like Kyle Boston, Beta Gamma system, BC system, and so on. So let me, as a comparison, like one dimensional case, this, uh, this operator is live on the circle. So you can, you can only collide from the left or from the right. So you have an associative product. So if you work like in two dimension case, like, so there's no left and right. So points collide, there's no left and right, but they can basically rotate. So you have this kind of uh, Fourier expansion. And if, the, if, if it, it depends on the location holomorphically, and so you have this that kind of Kyle, Kyle model, and this is called a Kyle vertex operator algebra. And this, you, can, you can see the difference like in, from this picture and <clears throat> basically from the geometry. And uh, actually in, in, in 2D case, uh, there's an important uh, um, structure that uh, you don't find it in, in 1D and it's quarter identity. But this is basically a way you, 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 you approach operator from the, from the interior or from the, uh, from the outside and they differ by some kind of rescue. But sometimes like uh, people write such a complicated formula but geometrically it's just about the rescue. Like we know pretty well in complex analysis and this formula will play an important role later when we construct a trace map for Kyr algebra. Okay, <clears throat> so here's one example, like a beta gamma BC system. So suppose you have a, like a graded uh, vector space equipped with an even symplectic pairing. So it pairs to like uh, bosons or pairs to fermions, for example then you can obtain a vertex operator algebra on the following three differential ring. So it choose a basis of the, of the vector space. And you, you, like you look at all the possible like differential operators applied to this A and uh, generate, generate uh, a formal power series ring. And the OPE I mentioned is about, uh, for example, if you choose two generators from this uh, vector space and these two local operators, when they approach each other, they create an order one pole. And this order one pole will, will indicate the, the, the quantum structure. Uh, this, this example will appear later on. So this is called a beta gamma PC system. Um, um, now, so in general, in general speaking, like if you work with a Kyle sig model, I say <clears throat> from a two dimensional surface to a target and uh, the theory is chiral, like means like everything depends on the operators depends on the location holomorphically, then this data will produce a bundle of Kyle vertex operator algebra on the target. And you can think about this one as a Kyle analog of wire bundle in topological quantum mechanics. We have seen this wire bundle just now, like in, in Fadosov's story. Now, <clears throat> so precisely if you, if you understand what's happening in, in Fadosov's story, then we have the analog of Fadosov in this two-dimensional case. And let me try to say a few words, explain this, this theorem. So if you quantize this two-dimensional Kaya model, and the quantization is, uh, uh, is formulated in, in the, in the BW formalism, then if you quantize this model, this quantization is equivalent to solving a flat connection on the vertex operator algebra bundle Vx. And you basically find a flat uh, a connection in, in the following way. The first one again is D, but the connection term look like the, the commutator with the Kyle vertex operator, like a modes of some kind of Kyle 
what if uh, uh, higher vertex operator. And, <clears throat> and precisely, um, you can think about the theorem as the, the higher analog of Fatasov connection. I mentioned just now that in the one dimensional model, like topological quantum mechanics, solving quantum mass equation is the same thing as uh, finding like a, a Fatasov connection. In a 2D car case, it's going to be the same, like uh, finding a, a flat connection of, of the following form on this vertex algebra bundle is the same as quant uh, finding a quantization of the 2D, 2D car model. And I just mentioned like this, this, this theorem is proved in, in, the, in the BV formalism. And actually this theorem has uh, some interesting applications. Um, uh, this, for example, uh, in the literature, we have many ways to construct why, like chi algebras or some kind of vertex algebras using BRC reduction, some kind of uh, BRC operators. Of, uh, is, basically they are written in, in the following way. So what this theorem, uh, says it's the following, like, like conversely, it's like a, if you want to understand the PRC reduction of some kind of uh, what is operator algebra, then this reduction has the physical model in terms of this uh, uh, chiral deformation. So you can read the theorem in the other way. So you find a physical model to describe the like uh, algebraic BRC reduction. Okay, so that's, that's the, one of the main theorem uh, for, uh, for this uh, 2D quantization. Now we, we're trying to use, we, 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 we try to use the theorem to understand more precisely um, the, the, uh, the algebraic structure. So here, this algebraic structure is about the so-called chiral homology for, for chiral algebras. So here's a, a very, very uh, brief History and uh, about this chi algebra and chi homology. So, around 1994, Zhu Yongchang Zhu studied the space of so-called genus one conformal block. Nowadays, we know we call it like zero elliptic chi homology, and established the modular invariance for a certain class of VOA. And that's actually a quite deep and uh, remarkable uh, work. And later on, actually, uh, Bayes and Dreamfield. They define the chiral homology for general algebraic, uh, for, for like chiral algebras on general algebraic curves. And uh, basically it's, a, it's, a, it's pretty uh, analytic, but also categorical construction. And um, also actually uh, abstract. And recently uh, many people are trying to understand this construction like concretely, for example, Ecker and uh, Haluani, they wrote some papers to explain explicitly this chiral complex. Uh, a few uh, like a few leading terms, and then actually there are many other works like uh, try to try to try to trying to understand this uh, Bayesian Dreamfield's chi homology or chi complex. But roughly speaking, it's the following: like uh, <clears throat> uh, so intuitively, this chi complex. I, I, I just mentioned that uh, we're gonna find an algebraic the chain complex, which describes the uh, algebraic structure. So what, what's happening is the following, like you put a bunch of data on the, on the torus, for, for example, and uh, they, they, they can collide and in terms of the operator product expansion, then this differential just describe how they collide. And it's similar to the Hochschild chain complex in on the circle. So as you see, like a Hochschild differential describe uh, like, like a pairwise uh, colliding uh, so this 2D case, you have something very similar. So uh, more, or even okay, I can describe this more concretely and you will see what's happening and how it's gonna be related to the quantum vision. So, so I will focus on the elliptic curve case uh, because it's flat and it's very simple. And <clears throat> so this is my, my elliptic curve, E tau, and tau is the modular. modular. And for each n, I, I will denote by Fn, the ring of Merrimore functions on the on the nth consistent product of the EP curve, uh, but they, they can have poles, and with all possible poles al along the diagonals, as you see, like this is a general stuff that you're gonna find for correlation functions. When points collide, you will create singularities, but otherwise, it's okay. Then, uh, uh, Akron Haluani, I just mentioned, they give uh, 
an explicit expression of the leading, a few leading terms of the chiral train complex, elliptic train complex modeled on the following stuff. So it's like, a, for example, the nth, uh, <clears throat> nth part of the train complex is, uh, is given by like nth tensor product of the vertex algebra valued in this uh, Merrimoff function on the on the product of the and like a product of the curve. So you see like in the whole chain complex case, you don't have the second factor. It's purely topological. You can only have, have like n tensor product of the algebra. But in the chiral case, you have to remember the, 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 the chiral data, the positions and how they vary holomorphically. So you have the additional data functions. Then for example, you can construct a chain complex describing the 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 the, the chiral algebra uh, like the like uh, the chiral chain complex by the following like the leading term is very similar to the Hochschild but uh, but instead you have to incorporate the the functions on the product of the elliptic curve so you have to say the leading term is like a copy of the what is the algebra with f one the second one is like uh, two copies third one is three copies. And then you can write down the differential like rather explicitly. For example, if your two points are, 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 are collide, then you compute basically the OPE and uh, take a ratio with respect to the functions on the on, on the Merrimor functions. And and that's exactly the the, the 2D chiral analog of the, uh, the collision. Like, yes. So, sorry. What is this Z? You have on the left hand side Z1 and Z2. Ooh, and on the right hand side, Z, ah. just, just, just to understand what's the uh, link between them. Yes. For example, let's, let's, let, let's see like D1 term, D1 from C1 to C0. Like C1 has, uh, the, from, you see like C1 has two copies of the vertex algebra, uh, or two copies of, of vertex, op, of vertex operators. And the value in the, like a uh, uh, tensor, uh, like a, uh, the uh, product of the curve, like two copies of the curve. So it's given by valued in some uh, a factor by meromorphic functions on the on the on the product of the two it curves. The z1, z2 are the parameters basically, and uh, it turns out like a function on it curve with this with 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 with, with, with poles along the diagonal can be written in terms of one functions. But that's very very special if you if you, or if you work with just two copies. But in general, for example, uh, the next differential, like C2 to C1, you're going to be working with meromorphic functions on three products of the EDP curve. Then you have three uh, parameters, C1, C2, C3. They are parameters on the, on the three copies of the EDP curve. And, but because of the structure of the, uh, they have gonna be, they're going to be having poles along this uh, diagonals. So again, you can do, Basically, lower expansions are, 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 are along all the possible diagonal devi uh, divisors and so on. So, so the Z is basically uh, the parameters parameterize the points on the on, on parameterize the points on the on the EDP curve, for example. Yes. Oh, thanks a lot. Function, yeah. Just 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 one more question in this example of D one. So so, yes. so this uh, residue term. Uh, in terms yes. of the standard mode expansion, how we do it in CFT, is it uh, the zero, the, the, which, which, which mode is it zero, minus one, this uh, residue, which one is it? Uh, what, 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 which zero? Minus no, I mean, if suppose that uh, F is just simply constant, right? So, so but then, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, then the a, residue is, uh, the constant yes. term, or is it yes. like uh, one of us? Is, is it pole, or which which one is it in terms of the OPE? Yes. So suppose let's say f is a, is one constant one. Yes. Then you if you approach a to b, then this you, you have OPE power. You have the OPE expansion. Then the OPE like the the OPE expansion like you have like a for example this y a z to b just like when a approach b. You will find the the order one pole, the coefficient of coefficient of the order one pole. Okay. Okay. That's the, that's what it means. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you, you don't you don't have this one in the in the in in, in topological quantum mechanics. So usually, in, in in the topological case, if you approach like two operators approach each other, 
the, 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 somehow topologically they don't depend on the position, but in this case it does, and it does holomorphically. So, 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 so in particular, if we have something like um, current algebra, then this would be a Lie bracket part, right? With the pole. Uh, this the the next order order two pole. I think the order two pole is the Lie bracket part. Mm. Isn't it okay? Okay, but then, yeah, yeah, but we can discuss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And similarly, like if you have like a three uh, copies of the what is operate algebra, and leaving on three uh, products of the it curve, and you if if you look at the pairwise collision, and compute the corresponding ratio like uh, carefully, and you you find this uh, car differential. So this is a, again similar to Hausser differential, but you have to incorporate this. Uh, uh, this this uh, this uh, uh, holomorphic geometry, and and it can show like uh, if you compute directly the the composition of these two differential, the square zero, and it turns out like this is a consequence of a Borchardt identity that I just mentioned. So, <clears throat> and then you can define this part. There's a homology of above complex like that's in the in the leading terms. They show this is the same as the Chiral complex. A kind of homology defined by Bayesian syndrome field. So our goal actually is to do BV quantization and basically to find a, a so-called Kyr trace map. Uh, replacing originally is like a the trace map is defined on the in the in the in the in the deformation quantization case is defined on the Hochschild chain complex or, or cyclic complex. In this case, it's it's going to be defined on the uh, the Kyr chain. Uh, um, Chiral complex, and in this case, it's like an ellip elliptic chiral complex. And you can, if you compute the trace, this can be viewed as the 2D chiral analog of algebraic index theory. And that's the, that's the, and uh, <clears throat> that's the comparison. So, uh, sorry, can uh, I uh, yes. just go back one slide? So here we have fixed an elliptic curve, and we don't vary the elliptic curve. Is that right? Yes, yeah, so fi I fixed uh, here. It curve is fixed. Yes. I see. So if I were to vary the curve, then you would have this as a family of maps over the moduli of elliptic curves. Yes. Yes. Okay. You find a lot of modular, modular forms and so on from this construction. Yes. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so, uh, so before I move on, like let me let me again like uh, just just review the the basic data we're gonna find in this in this quantization. Um, so for I, 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 I'm going to explain the example of like a beta gamma BT system and its chiral deformation. Uh, again, these local operators, they're gonna be given by this, uh, this vertex algebra of beta gamma BC I just mentioned. And the chain, com the chain complex is the, chain com the chiral chain complex of chiral uh, vertex operators. And you can, you can view the example I just mentioned as the model. And you, again, you're gonna, you're gonna find a BV algebra and this is a geometry of the zero modes. Like it, this one exists in all like field theory. Um, in, if there's no, no zero modes, then this is a rather simple. And then you're gonna, we're gonna find a, a trace map. And this is actually the goal. To find the trace map, the analog of the trace map in, the, uh, in, in two dimensional case from this chiral chain complex to this, uh, this BV algebra. It's gonna be it, 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 it gonna interchange the Kyr differential with the BV operator H bar delta, and this is a this has to be this this has to be satisfied. I mean, as a requirement, actually, you have to solve it. And this map I, I mentioned, this map actually incorporates all the geometry of the the renormalization process. And so, <clears throat> so now let me try to explain like how to construct such a map and how to prove the quantum mass equation. So here uh, again, we have to borrow ideas from topological quantum mechanics. So uh, again, in the in the topological quantum mechanical case, I, I, I explained that uh, the trace map is constructed by correlation functions on the circle. And in the two D chiral case, is something similar, like it's called a conformal block. So this correlation functions of these local operators in this chiral DFT, uh, <clears throat> you can you can define something like this. You put some local operators on the Riemann surface. And evaluate like like uh, evaluate as a correlation function, and all 
And one, one way of doing this evaluation is called a chiral component block. So you can view chiral component block as a way to do this evaluation, and there can be many of them. Um, actually, but, but no matter what, like if you do this one, what you usually find is a function on the configuring space, like endpoint configuring space of the Riemann surface, but with poles when, when local operators collide. So in particular, it's gonna be a function with meromorphic poles of arbitrary order along all the possible diagonals. So again, this is rather general. And basically uh, all these kind of chiral component blocks, non-trivial ones, like we are satisfied, we have this property. Now, again, the trace map is gonna be constructed by an integration of such a correlation function on the product, on, basically on the, on the configuring space or on the product of the Riemann surface. But here actually it's a trouble, like um, because of the poles, like when, when operators collide, they gonna, they gonna cr like uh, create a pose, possibly very high order. And uh, so this might be singular. <clears throat> So the, 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 the naive integration doesn't look like convergent, but in the topological field case, top, like a TQFT case, it's, it's solved in a, in a rather straightforward way. In that case, in, in, in topological field theory, such a, such a correlation function, usually they can be like extended to a, compact, a compactification of the, of the configuring space. Then again, you'll see in this compactification, you can define these integrations. But in this case, in the chiral uh, CFT case, there's no way you can compactify to make this one well defined. They can be very singular actually. So the usual TQFT method doesn't work in this case. So, <clears throat> but again, this is something we need actually. So we need to give a precise meaning to the following naively divergent integral. So omega here is a differential form on the product of the Riemann surface with uh, possibly like up, up trip order poles like al along this diagonal. So we want to define such an object. And if we, if we define this one properly, uh, they cannot satisfy a bunch of nice, nice, uh, nice, uh, nice properties and act actually turns out that it can be solving our quantum mass equation. So <clears throat> to make sense of this one, it turns out to be have a very simple solution. Actually it's, a, it's a, such a simple solution that uh, uh, we are a sort of uh, surprised in, in the beginning. Originally, we are, it's not done in this way. We're using some kind of uh, uh, complicated regularization like heat kernel things and so on to do this one, but turns out to be rather simple. Um, this, uh, this is an idea like uh, I uh, developed with my colleague, uh, Jejo last year. We call this one regularized integral on the Riemann surface. So what's happening is the following. Like, let's, let's, uh, let's do the simple, uh, simple, simplest case. Like if you work with uh, an integration of, of two form on Riemann surface, just one copy. With, but the, it has meromorphic poles of arbitrary order along some device or like final set. Say omega might look like one over z to the 100 ar around some point or can be very singular. So the naive integration is divergent or, or for, for this omega. So what you do is the following. First, you decompose this omega into two terms. You can write this omega as alpha plus holomorphic D applied to beta. And here alpha is a two form with at most log, log pole. And beta is a zero one form with arbitrary order poles along this uh, divisor. And this is the holomorphic D, just the holomorphic Duran. You can, you can always find such a decomposition and it's not unique. You can find many of them. Then you can define such a integration. So I call this my regularized integral of this two form omega, which naively is, uh, uh, is not well defined by the following guy, like you integrate alpha on the Riemann surface. And uh, because alpha is, has uh, at most log pole, this one is absolute convergent. Uh, and it, yes. I'm, I'm a little bit confused. So your, your, your uh, two form, uh, in this way, it's it's not holomorphic, right? Because you want non non vanishing integrals. This is what it depends on z and z bar on your surface. Yeah, on z bar, yes, yes. Uh, okay. Move to form. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
uh, but the poles is like a mirror morphic pole. So you can have look, it, it can be something like a, a, a smooth function over z to the 1000 around some, 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 some point. But, but what, what does it mean exactly, mirror morphic poles, if your, your form itself is not mirror morphic, right? No, I mean, locally it's given by, locally, look, if you choose local coordinate, it can be given by like a, a smooth, smooth to form over z to some order. Okay. Yeah, uh, so, so that's, that's, that's what I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, so if you decompose in such a way, and the beta is integrated along the boundary of the, of the Riemann surface, then you can show if you define, again, because my, pole, my divisor D that, uh, is required not to meet the boundary, then this integration, I mean, the beta also is, uh, is the integration of beta is also well defined. The beta has many uh, big poles along this D, but they don't meet the boundary. So these two terms are well defined, and uh, I can show this that this, this this the, the right hand side doesn't depend on the choice of decomposition. If you find some other alpha and beta for such a decomposition, they give, they, they give rise to the same value. So this this is a way to you can integrate a two form with very high order poles along some divisors, and that's that's one definition. And it's it's, it's very simple complex analysis. And what turns out to be uh, remarkable is the following. Like, uh, first of all, this, this, this integration, which we call regularized integral, is invariant under conformal transformations. And somehow it's intrinsic. Uh, and you can view this one as by, by saying that this conformal geometry basically give rise to an intri intrinsic regularization of the original looking divergent integral. And also, What's important is like uh, this uh, regularized integral interturns the holomorphic the holomorphic theorem with the boundary, and this this is a compare to compare with the usual like a uh, Stokes theorem for the integration like uh, interturns the theorem with the boundary. Here is the holomorphic theorem, and then if you look at what's happening to the d bar, so interturns the d bar operator with the usual residue, and that's what it what it does to this uh, to this uh, regularized integral. And somehow you can show if, if you define some linear maps satisfying this property, it, it determines a unique uh, operation like this. And in general, if you if, if you can define some uh, the regularized integral on product of it, of 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 Riemann surfaces by iterating this process. So if you start with some forms, you integrate like a, a factor by factor, and um, you can show. This one doesn't depend on the order of the integration, so you have the forbidden type theorem, and uh, this is a this is a little bit not that obvious, but it, this is true. And also, then oh, with this definition, this gives rise to a rigorous uh, intrinsic definition of the integration of the two D correlation function as the integrations. Uh, see, yes, I I'm a bit confused about this definition of correlation functions because the right hand side, right. In order to integrate, it needs to be a differential form as you described yes. it. Now, I mean, to me, it's not obvious. It's a different, oh, I mean, is it a differential form under some conditions on the choice of O's or how is it? At least as, as you put it before, it more like sounds like a meromorphic function and not a differential form. Yeah, here I have, I'm a little bit sloppy. So if you write it out very carefully, this is gonna be a differential form with the, such a meromorphic poles along these diagonals. So yes, and the left hand side actually, um, they are given by this correlation is actually a so-called correlation of non-local operators. So where, where, where dizzy bars in, in this differential form, where dizzy bars oh, come from? This, this bar, actually a uh, them. actually it's, it's in this correlation function. It's valued in uh, uh, it, this, this correlation function valued in, as a top form on Riemann surface. Is this formula true for arbitrary genus or are you fixing elliptic curves, uh, a sigma to be an elliptic curve in this context? Uh, I mean, for this complex, actually it's, it's like this. I mean, in, 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 practical, in practical models, like uh, if, you, you, if you insert this operator correctly, you're gonna, be ending, you're gonna end up with like a form valued stuff on, on, the, on the product of, of the Riemann surface. But if you work with the curve and it's flat, and then you can you can trivialize the bundle in, in all different ways. But 
if you if you want to do things really intrinsic, for example, if you work with V model on, on, on the Riemann surface, and uh, you, if you insert these operators, you will find it's really valued as a, in, in, in this uh, top differential forms. But, but, but isn't it a, a kind of condition on those O's? Because in, oh, in yeah, general, yeah, yeah. you probably get some scenarios like either four more on degree or, right? I mean, you, is, you, it must be some condition on those operators O. Yes, if you if you like, actually, what 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 really happened? Yeah, the, probably this this is this is really a bad notation. So, but what what's happening is the following: like O O, for example, O one V. I should really I should be really uh, uh carefully write it as like a a topological topological descent of a local operator. So it's really a two form valued operator. Probably it's better to say this way. Okay. This, this okay. A, yeah. This that, 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 that that makes more sense, at least to me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's two form values, so that's why it's called a non-local operator. And uh, what 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 I'm describing here is actually to to make a definition of these uh, correlations of these non-local operators instead of just local operators. But actually, this non-local operator is gonna uh, is uh, related to the correlation of local operators by topological descent. But uh, but that's the general there's a general way to to say say about it. But this is my definition. So. <clears throat> And it turns out this definition is simple, but actually remarkable. It solves all the, the, the equations that uh, you expect from physics. For example, uh, in, in a paper to appear, we proved this uh, holomorphic normal equation from this uh, using this definition. And also there's a, a so-called contact equation studied by a lot of people um, <clears throat> related to the study of, uh, actually it's related to study of index. So, um, but that, that's a, that's our definition for 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 correlators of non-local operators. And I need non-local operator just because you know, like uh, when I'm describing uh, inter interacting theory, the interactions, the the deformation, the interactions are given by some integrations on the spacetime or on here on the Riemann surface. I think about this one as the operator, so I I integrate our integrate them as a correlation as I put them on on the um, for example, if I can, I can, I can do, I can do tail expansions and trade them as I non-local operators. So that's why I need to, uh, I need to have a construction of such operator as a, as a correlations in the interaction theory. So that's a, that's basically what's happening. Now here's the main theorem. <clears throat> uh, uh, let me say a few words. Like it, it, it's about this. So. This theorem is stated for beta gamma BT system, but it but it can it also work for Kyle balls and so on. So, for example, we can construct a, a map in the following way. First, the left hand side, like a copy of what is operator algebra, valued in this FN, it's just a model uh, like without the relation it models the chiral chain complex, and two this BV algebra, and uh, valued. In differential form, like uh, as a differential forms on, like a product of the curve, but with all possible poles along diagonal. So this map, this this guy is nothing but just Feynman diagrams. So in your model, you an interacting model, like uh, you write down all the Feynman diagrams, without integrating the vertex, and that's what you're gonna find. And um, <clears throat> the location of the vertex is just given by location on the on the curve. So this map is, is not, it's not, it's not a mysterious, it's just a Feynman diagram. Second, once you, you find this one, you, 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 you use your Feynman rules, write down something, then you, you want to integrate on, on the space time. But the integration here is a little bit subtle because of the singularity. And you have to do, usually you have to do renormalization so on and so on. But in this case, you can renormalize using simply just uh, the rock rise integral I just defined. Then you, you can integrate out this part to end up with the BV algebra. Then you get a map from like a copies of vertex algebra to the BV algebra. And you can show this, uh, this recognized integral has exactly the right property to make this map as a trend map. So this one satisfied the, the quantum mass equation. And also uh, this factors, factors through the, the relations required by chiral complex. So it's really defined on the, the chiral homology. This is what's happening. Uh, 
so I want to explain why this is related to the it require index uh, in physical models. And I follow the, the discussion by Douglas and Digraph in their um, basically the discussion of chiral deformation of conformal field theory. It, it's like this. So what's happening in physics is, is the following. Like you see, you start with a, it's a particular model like a free theory, then you turn on interactions by, uh, by turning on some, like you can look at some interactions which only, or which only like uh, contain holomorphic derivatives. That's why it's called a chiral deformation. And then you can compute correlation functions of this guy. Um, like uh, then if, if you compute these correlation functions on the it curve, what you'll find is the following, like <clears throat> physically. The left hand side, it turns out to be a, a modular object. But sometimes like physics define the, 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 this, uh, this, this correlation function by a trace on the Hilbert space and in contact in such a way. And this looks like a familiar, like a, like, like a characters. I mean, for example, if you quantize some particular uh, uh, representation and you compute the trace, a Q, a Q series valued in this chiral vertex operator, uh, valued in this chiral vertex operators and compute the trace. And this is actually usually physicists define um, this, uh, this partition functions in, the, in such a way. But this one, Q series usually is not a modular and this is gonna be related to the, the modular object of the left hand side by a limit, which is, a, which is called a holomorphic limit in the following way. So the left hand side usually is given by a so-called almost holomorphic modular form. It's modular, but it has a mild uh, anti-holomorphic dependence in, H, in tau bar. But if you remove the tau bar dependence in a way, the leading term, you're gonna produce the so-called quasi-modular form. And that's the right hand side. And this is what uh, what is expect from the physical models, and somehow this formula, uh, you can you can view this formula as some a, a version of chiral algebra index because the right hand side is really computing the the, the characters, the left hand side is the really computing index. So why such a thing can happen? Uh, this is exactly the property about this regularized integral that I proved uh, in the same paper. So let me just explain the um, the theorem. Uh, it is the following. So suppose you start with a, a, a meromorphic elliptic function. So you, you can think about this phi as some, some, some meromorphic function defined on the product of, of the elliptic curve and depends on tau, like your various with respect to tau holomorphically. Now, <clears throat> now uh, you can do the following, like either you integrate this guy with respect to the volume form on the elliptic curve. But because of the, the poles, I mean, you, can, you cannot integrate directly, but you can use our definition of regular integral to define this one. So you, you find something like this. This is a general stuff you're gonna find in, in like computing the, this correlation functions of 2D car model. And on the other hand, what usually like people do is like, because this phi is, is, is basically meromorphic as long as, uh, and they're holomorphic as long as like zi, zjs, are not the same. So you can put a bunch of A cycle on the torus. So integrate each copy on the A cycle and it's very defined. And then it doesn't depend on the, the small deformation of the location of the A cycle. Then the theorem says like, if you compute the left hand side, the regularized integral, you can show it's an element, uh, it depends on tau and also on tau bar in a way that it's holomorphic dependence on one or imagine, imagine part of tau. And in the so-called top bar goes to infinity limit, you basically set this factor one over imagined part of tau to zero. You get something like holomorphic or meromorphic in, in tau. And it's given by the, the, the average of A cycle integrals on the of the right hand side. And, and basically this property explains uh, the, the chiral index, the, the modularity prop the modularity property of the chiral index. And, and this is also one of the um, main theorem in, the, in our paper to connect this 2D with uh, 2D correlation with the so a cycle, which is about basically 1D correlation. And you can think about the right hand side as something like a, if you push forward this torus to a circle, you get a quantum mechanical model. And this is computing the trace in this quantum mechanical model. 
and they are related, and not, not directly the same, but related by this Toba infinity limit. And uh, the other way around is, is like this regularized integral give rise to a geometric moderate completion. Now, this is summary, like uh, what's happening is the following, like this algebraic index with the, with the elliptic higher index. So in the one dimensional case, topological mechanic case, we have this associative algebra, and then we have the Hochschild chain complex, and the quantum mass equation intertwines the, the Hochschild differential with the BW operator. And this uh, correlation functions uh, is defined using a compact compactification space, compactified configuration space of the circle. And you find this the algebra index. And in the 2D case, like we have the vertex operator algebra and you have this chiral homology, a chiral complex. And the quantum mass equation intertwines this uh, chiral differential with the BV. And you can use the regularized integral to, to, to define this uh, non-local operator, the correlations of non-local operator. And you're gonna, you're gonna find this elliptic chiral index. And that's, uh, that's what's happening. Yeah, I guess my time is up. So I'm gonna skip the application. So yeah, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Um, these questions or comments? Yeah, you can either raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so um, this uh, way of regularizing the integral with this uh, bar, yes. um, can it be absorbed into the DV formalism? Oh, yes, actually. Um, okay, so let, let me say it this way. Um, uh, there are two ways to do this uh, uh, renormalization stuff for these two, uh, but probably not two ways, but many ways, actually. Uh, yeah, Andrea also has some ways using this uh, um, uh, comparable net and so on. But actually, if you do this, uh, do this 2D chiral model, and and uh, if you can, for example, uh, Kevin used, used a way of, for example, he kernel regularizations, and you do this BV quantization of quantum mass equation, and you, you have to do a cutoff from the heat kernel. And here I, I use a different way, like uh, I do define this regularized integral. It turns out to be equivalent these two methods. Um, you you, you have actually there's some heavy analysis behind, but. You can show these two ways are, are, are really this equivalent if you try to relate the solution quantum mass equation to um, yeah to the to the to the quantization the model of the quantization yes so in, in this in this sense they are they are the same I see it's so in a, yes. in a sense the the using a cutoff uh, it's equivalent to this one to, yes to the one that you're yeah, is it so this one is much simpler and geometric, yes. Yes. And the equivalence is, is something complicated, like um, is it uh, up to a multiple map or something like this? Oh, uh, well, I, I can only prove the equivalence by brute force ah, uh, estimate. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but I, I don't have a conceptual good way to understand this. Yeah, my, my student, Zheng Ping Gui, yeah, in his thesis, he proved uh, part of them on, 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 the, on the plane using just brute force estimate. But, but <laughs> generally we don't, we don't have a good way. So, but I, I love this one better because it, it's much simpler and uh, I don't need to do, the, the heat kernel cutoff makes the calculation a little bit dif difficult. But this one, the calculation of this one is easier. And because of the following theorem, we have a very nice way to use the use modularity to come to compute the, 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 the partition function. So that's a that's that's one advantage. Yes. I see. Thank you. Um, more questions or comments? Um, I have perhaps some kind of mix between a question and comment. Uh, so you mentioned in the beginning of the talk the uh, uh, Poisson sigma models. Yes. And uh, um, so uh, probably, you know, so in, in Poisson Sigma models, you, you can make different choices of this so-called propagator. And mm -hmm. uh, Kontsevich's original paper on deformation quantization uses some kind of 
very nice propagator, but then he also suggested that one can use uh, a simpler but more singular uh, propagator, which is a D-log, mm -hmm. kind of yes. logarithmic propagator. So then conservative integrals are kind of, at least um, at first sight, they are divergent. And then there was this question how to, um, how to understand them, whether one can understand them. And uh, some years ago in collaboration with uh, uh, Rossi, Torosian and Wilwacher, I suggested some regularization for those mm -hmm. divergent integrals, which showed that uh, actually the conservatives map with logarithmic propagator is also a formality map. Uh, oh. So I was wondering whether, whether your way of regularizing integrals kind of, I think it would be interesting to compare how, how uh, so this is a particular example, maybe a concrete question whether your technology would apply to that example. So one has a Poisson Sigma model and one takes the uh, logarithmic propagator. Mm -hmm. So there, there the, those integrals would be divergent a priori. And the question is whether this regularization would, um, would help. I see. Yeah, uh, this is definitely a great question. Actually, um, to make sense of this Iraqite integral, uh, you can you can extend the definition to something that uh, you can include log z absolutely square and the log log z and log log z, you so on. You, you can you can put all of them into this uh, in, in, into in, 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 into here, and then still this is very defined, or like a, like functions of moderate growth, for example. Yeah, and probably that's uh, that's gonna be the connection. Like, uh, yeah, that's a good point. I, I've never thought about it, but maybe yeah, it yeah, might be. We kind of there. Uh, Wilbacher invented some some very ingenious way of regularizing the integrals, which uh, really kind of basically was a key point in solving the problem. Uh, yes, yes. But, uh, but 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 it it, it it looks a little bit like a handicraft. It, mm. it, it, it might, I, certainly if you have a general technology, at least it's certainly worth checking whether this general technology um, settles the problem. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good suggestion, yes. <clears throat> mm. so, so thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. So further questions or comments? Um, maybe I have a small question. Uh, so I, maybe I, I might have missed a bit of a, a setup, but at some point you mentioned that you want topological descent to construct or something like a topological string amplitude to be to integrate over the configuration yes. space. So, but I thought that you are talking not about topological conformal field theories, but sort of something, a, yeah. something that doesn't. So for topological descent, I, I thought that you need a, well, a Q, so it's something like DQ inverse. Yeah, it's chiral, it's actually chiral descent. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't explain this. So this model is not topological. That's why uh, mm -hmm. I mentioned that uh, this 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 one doesn't work. Yeah, you you know this pretty well. Like uh, in the to topological case, you do you compute this uh, the correlators of topological descent of this guy. You right. can you can quantify yes. And in this model, in the chiral model, you can do a similar. You can do something similar chiral descent. <clears throat> but you do you have Q, Q in the game. Yes, uh, Q is that... game, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. it, it's like a D bar plus something, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, thank and you. Then, yes, and then this guy, you, you, you'll find that this guy is very singular and no way to compactify. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually puzzles me for quite a long time. And mm -hmm. I know I used the, I used the heat kernel regularization to do this one uh, using a brute force way. And I showed it's convergent, as in, 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 it's UV convergent by some mm -hmm. mysterious cancellation of the poles, but I never understand why it does so. So, and this, this, this method, this regular integral method somehow explains like uh, intuitively why it's true. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. more can I, uh, mm -hmm. sure. can so, I ask you maybe, so uh, in one dimension, there is this BV operator but also for me, always mysterious you know, there is the second parameter, U, like in cyclic homology. Yeah, it's uh, Hochschild plus U times cyclic. And it mysteriously behaves, you know, like uh, 
there is h delta yeah b plus h delta or whatever but, yes. but there is also u, little b plus u times big b and this b uh, big b well actually for a frobenius algebra it does yes. become a bv operator so yes. there is this kind and the formulas look remarkably kind of self dual or between h and u I wonder what do you have in, first of all, do you have any kind of view of that? And also, do you have anything in 2D uh, like that? Yes, the B, somehow we have the B is like a circle, like a circle operation. So it's about a circle, like a H1 um, <coughs> the, yes. the circle. Yes. And uh, on the Riemann surface, actually, we're, we're going to have a lot of stuff like this, which we, we, we don't, we haven't understood this one pretty well, well yet. Like uh, on the, on, for example, on the torus, you have A, B cycles, you have different H1, A, A cycle and A, B cycle, and also the uh, H2. And uh, somehow we should have a few operations in such a way, like rotate along one, rotate on, on two, and the uh, higher rotate somehow. But the way, we haven't understood this one precisely yet. I mean, I think Dikla exists inside the, the chiral chain complex. Mm -hmm. Yes, but we, we haven't we haven't understood this understood this yet. Yeah. There appear also e to the tau something, but tau mm -hmm. not sure if it has anything to do with it. Yeah, probably not. Yes. Um... Yeah, this is something. Yeah, we 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 thought a little bit about it. Like, uh, we haven't I haven't succeed yet, but uh, we hope to find because somehow what what's happening is the following. Like, in using this B capital B, the the Kunis operator, uh, in in our calculation of the index, for example, your index theorem, and uh, they play the role of doing localization. An analog of like a, a TR bot localization. That's way. That's the way we understand this index using this BV. So what 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 we what, what we did is the following. Like in the, for example, in your algebraic index case, we what we do is like using find the BV analog of the TR bot localization formula, and the B plays a role. So in this two D case, we want to follow the physics idea of doing localization, and from there we want to find an analog of uh, the of the B, but uh, this calculation hasn't been done yet. That's one way to understand, yes. I see, yeah, thanks so. Thank you, more, more, more questions or comments? Um, maybe I have one more somewhat naive question. So do I understand correctly that in, in those chiral, chiral CFTs or chiral vertex algebras that you're using, all the conformal dimensions are integers? Right, so we cannot we cannot have whatever like in general in CFTs we have whatever rational or even non-rational conformal dimensions, but but everything that we are discussing here, we are saying that all the conformal dimensions are integers. Is it yeah, right? But, 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 but if you do BS to reduction, you can create a Russian rational ones. <clears throat> yes, and so, then, if they're rational ones. How do I then they are multi-valued, right? Then then what what what, what does it mean oh, to integrate something? Oh, you, you mean integer? You mean the dimension or a central charge or, or so so? No dimension. The dimensions of your your holes of your observer. Oh, oh oh yes. Here I focus. Oh yes, you're right. I, here I only focus on uh, yes the uh, uh, dimension of integers. So, for instance, uh, uh, if I wanted to do something like the Ising model, yes, so this this is not suitable. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't. Uh, yeah, I, 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 you haven't uh, started this much yet, but this good point. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, 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 yeah, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Because then, uh, so, 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 does it mean that the examples are basically? Whatever current algebras, W algebras, like I mean, if you force all the dimensions to be integers, you you will have some zoo of examples, but it's a small subset of the conformal zoo. Yes, it's only that's right. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. the, the the first uh, yeah somehow we've been focused on understanding like the W algebras and their representation theory, mm -hmm. the basically the, the characters. 
That's why we 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 we, we like mm -hmm. uh, establish this model. But you're 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 right. Yes, this is a, a much more general setup to be understood. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, any other questions or comments for C? Uh, if not, let's thank our speaker again. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for attending. Yeah. Th Thanks a lot, everybody, for participating. So, C, thanks a lot for a great talk. And uh, so, we meet uh, next week. It will be Mikola Matvichuk uh, speaking on Global Poisson. And this will be on this so called Western schedule, which means three hours later with respect to today's schedule. And uh, I think, how is it? Just, just one question. In the meantime, I think the change of time in Europe will intervene. And I don't know, right? Maybe in, in some parts of the world, it will have whatever different consequences. It may shift. Uh, I think in, in, in America, it will be sh for, for, for two weeks, if I don't, I, I, I don't quite remember, right? Nikita, do, do you know? How yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, actually on the website and also in the announcements, the, I've included times in various cities so hopefully that will help you to make sure that you arrive at the correct time yeah but but, but at least ne 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 next week it seems to be a dangerous week in terms of uh, <laughs> in terms of timing there, there is there is some shift of time between different parts of the world in and it happens over this weekend in europe right okay <laughs>